Today on BRS TV, we're going to continue our basics of a new saltwater aquarium series with a brief overview of pumps, plumbing, and electrical, first of which is pumps. Pumps serve a few basic purposes, providing water flow to the tank, feeding filtration equipment, and as a return from the sump. The flow-related pumps do pretty much exactly what it sounds like, provide water flow. Water flow is an important component of any reef tank. Proper flow promotes gas exchange at the surface of the tank and oxygen-rich water. Good flow will also prevent pockets of pollutants from building up and provides an active, healthy environment for the fish to thrive in. For the most part, flow is generally provided with small pumps like these high-flow powerheads. The two most popular options are the Hydor Corellia and the Toon Streams. Generally, we want to provide between 20 and 40 times turnover an hour. On a 40-gallon tank, I'm probably looking for between 800 and 1,600 gallons of flow per hour. So in this case, two of these Toon 6025s or two Corellia 750s would probably be a good fit. Generally speaking, most people will mount them on opposite ends of the tank, either on the sides or back, and try to make the flow patterns intersect in the center. It's probably something you'll end up adjusting over time. Next up is return pumps. If you have a sump, you'll also need a return pump. The return pump will be used to get the water from your sump back up to the tank. Most people will select a pump with a flow rate around 10 times the tank size. You will want to oversize it a bit to deal with the head pressure, which is a resistance the pump will have to overcome from things like elbows and the height difference between the pump and where the water enters the tank. You have two basic options, a submersible option like this one where you can attach a hose and drop it right in the sump. On smaller to medium sized tanks, I really like these Eheim Compacts and Seche pumps. They're small, affordable, and most importantly, one of the quietest pumps around. Some of these submersible options can also be used externally if you're careful, but the fittings are generally a bit more fragile and a bit more likely to develop leaks over time than a pump that was designed to be used externally. More advanced reefers in larger tanks tend to use external pumps like these. One of the primary advantages is they keep most of the heat generated by the pump out of the tank. Submersible pumps by their very nature will transfer all of the heat generated by the pump to the water. A good external pump will transfer just a fraction of that heat and the rest will be dispersed into the surrounding air. Generally speaking, they also handle head pressure and high flow rates more efficiently. Most people will also say it's much easier to manifold an external pump to run your return and other equipment off the same pump. It's not uncommon to have a few other pieces of equipment in the sump that require a pump to feed them, like this carbon filter. For smaller equipment like this, the Cobalt Aquatics MJ series is one of the more popular options. There are pumps out there that look similar, but most of them are much louder, consume more power, and not as reliable. Time to talk about plumbing. If you don't have a sump, there really won't be much to plumb. If you do, there are a few basic ways to plumb the system. Flexible tubing, hard PVC, or a hybrid of both. Flexible tubing is by far the easiest. Basically, all you need is some tubing, barb fittings, and hose clamps. You can probably plumb your entire system in 10 minutes. The most common options for tubing is clear vinyl and braided nylon. I personally try not to use the vinyl tubing for most projects because it kinks too easily, which can cause a laundry list of issues. The braided nylon holds its shape much better and I think much more reliable. You can also choose to hard plumb your system with PVC pipe. Hard plumbing adds complexity and time to the system, but is more reliable impossible to kink, allows you to use high quality valves and fittings, as well as simply looks really sharp. Because it adds cost and requires a significant amount of measuring, it's generally done by intermediate to advanced reefers. An easier alternative is a hybrid option that uses both flexible tubing and high quality PVC fittings and valves. By adding barb insert fittings to your favorite valves, you can use flexible tubing in between. This is much easier to install than a complete hard plumb system. I have a few favorite PVC fittings and valves. First are unions. These are simple fittings that allow you to unscrew and separate them. It makes it super easy to disassemble the plumbing for system maintenance or upgrades. These true union ball valves are also nice and basically a high quality ball valve with unions on both ends. 
These unions are the type of thing you might not appreciate as a new aquarium owner, but I guarantee when you need them, you'll be extremely happy that they're there. Most new reefers might use one or two unions. Intermediate reefers will put them in some of the places they wish they had them on their last builds, and advanced reefers will probably put a union in basically every place they can. I also use check valves on many systems. A check valve is designed to prevent water from siphoning from the tank down to the sump when you turn the pump off for maintenance or during a power outage. It is a good idea to make sure the return line is situated so a siphon only drains a minimal amount of water into the tank, but a check valve adds an additional level of security if your return gets bumped down into the tank. I recommend the Y version of the check valve, which is really easy to disassemble and clean. The ability to clean and maintain the valve is critical if you want the check valve to work reliably for many years. Last thing we're going to go over today is a few electrical tips. First thing you want to do is make sure the outlet you're using isn't overloaded. Take a moment to check out how many household items are plugged into that circuit. For instance, you probably don't want to plug it into the same circuit as your huge home theater system. If you have a really large system with a ton of equipment, you may need to distribute it over multiple circuits. You'll also need some power bars. It's a good idea to get a couple heavy duty ones and try to distribute the load evenly. Try not to put the largest power consuming items like lights, chillers, and heaters on the same bar. You'll probably also want to get at least one digital timer to turn your lights on and off for you. We suggest the heavy duty digital versions with the grounded plug. There are also some nice aquarium controllers out there that can manage power, timers, and many other functions for you. They used to be complex, but these days they can be set up really easily, and some of the cheaper options aren't that much more expensive than a couple high-quality power bars and timers. Lastly, any electrical item used near water should use a drip loop on the cord. There should be a diagram and the instructions included with basically anything purchased for the aquarium, but for the most part, it's just a loop at the bottom of the cord, so if there is a leak, it drips off the bottom of the loop, rather than following the cord into your electrical outlet. It's also wise to use some zip ties, cable clamps, or other methods of cord management to keep everything in place. Not only will it look nice, but it'll be safer as well. That wraps up today's episode. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes come out, hit our YouTube subscribe button below, or visit BulkReefSupply.com and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.